Kevin here. I wanted to do a little exercise with you that might help you understand what the discussion I'm going to get into. First thing I'd like you to do is, uh, with your eyes open, turn your head to your right, just like this. Without closing your eyes, real fast, snap your head forward. Now, before you say anything, tell me if you noticed anything in between looking this way and looking this way. Now, if you go real slow, you'll probably notice everything that's in between. Hey, I have a coffee cup right here. I didn't even see it. The reason is because our brains only pick up information in frames, kind of like a movie projector. It's not actually motion that we're looking at. We're looking at a bunch of still photos that are shown to us very fast, and it appears to be motion. So the way we perceive things around us can only be absorbed at 0.02 frames per second. Reality itself, and if you've tuned into my last videos, you'll realize that I'm under the, not only the assumption, I truly believe we are in a simulated reality. Reality can only move at the speed of light. In other words, the frames that are shifted in reality happen at the speed of light. In other words, that many frames per second, we only see it in sections that can only move as fast as the speed of light. And then we only perceive what we perceive. We get a uh, time-enhanced camera, we can slow that down a little bit, but we're never going to get to that speed of light. However, the speed of light is a speed limit that only applies to our simulated reality. This speed has been, the speed limit has already been broken. Not, in fact, it's being broken as we speak. Not just by 1.2% uh, 1 the speed of light, I'm talking about seven or eight times the speed of light. This was done in an experiment where they took two photons from the same atom. And photons in the same atom have rotations based on one photon. If one photon is rotating one way, the photon in the same atom will rotate the other way. Now they took these two photons, and you know, in modern day we can split atoms, we can do all kinds of stuff, but they took these two photons, and in this experiment, and I'm trying to remember it, but I can't, but it, it's definitely online, you can Google it. They separated the two photons by 86 miles. And then they observed the spin of one, and then sure enough, 86 miles away, almost instantaneously, or what they believe could be instantaneously, the photon started spinning in the exact opposite direction. This information, calculated with time dilation and everything, had to have had been passed from that photon to that photon at six times the speed of light for that to have happened. So we know that information gets passed faster than the speed of light. However, in our reality, speed of light is the limiter because of its relationship to time and the time dilation. And if you, if you looked at my video prior to this one, I explained time dilations and Einstein's theory. However, this only applies to the simulated reality that we live in. And the reason we have more, I guess, more evidence that this is a reality, or this is our reality, that we are simulated, started with the experiment by John Wheeler in 1978. And his experiment was to it, the original intent of the experiment was to see if photons act like waves or particles. And the way he did this is he, it was a double slit experiment. So if you picture yourself on a rifle range and you picture a big wall in front of you and then it has two openings, like two slits in the wall, and you fire a million shots at this wall, the only rounds you're going to see on the other side of this wall, let's say the backboard behind it, are a bunch of bullet holes, you know, given the error factor, the fact that you can move your rifle a little bit and, and still squeeze a bullet through, you're still just going to see a pattern of a bunch of bullet holes with, that looks like two slits. However, now, 
if, if that were a wave, let's say it was in a pond, and you, you splash the water behind the wall, the, water, the wave would hit the two slits, and then from the slits, it would start to arc out, like kind of like a pebble in a pond, and then eventually the two ripples would interfere with each other, and that's considered the wave part of our property. So the experiment was to determine whether or not photons travel like particles or waves. What came from this experiment, and this was pretty rem remarkable, is that photons, when they're not being observed on the molecular level, they act as a wave. However, if you have a camera set up that can actually observe the photon, it acts like a particle. Now, of course, there could have been errors. And back in 1978, they dismissed this. Okay, we don't have an accurate enough uh, equipment to determine whether or not this is a particle or a wave. So we're just going to say it has both properties. And when I was in college, that's how photons were described to me. They act as particles in a wave. But later on, in 2007, this experiment was repeated and with a lot more variations. In other words, they, they uh, block off one side of the, the, wall, the slot on one side, and then they would do that randomly where the observer couldn't even determine whether or not one side or the other would be blocked off. And what they found is that photons act a certain way when they're being observed. It wasn't the experiment that was amiss. It was actually the fact that when we look at something on the molecular level, its behavior changes. This was found to be accurate to 99.999%. In other words, there is only one in a billion chance that this could be a random occurrence. This pretty much proves that reality is based on our observation. The other information we got from these experiments, of course, that there, there was a lot of variations to the experiments. Like I said, they were blocking off one side versus another. They used different lights. They, um, there was a lot of uh, different variables that were introduced into this experiment to get the information that we got today. This information we have today says that not only does our observation change reality, it also changes reality both in the present, the future, and in the past. What we do today also affects the past. What we did in the past also affects the future. Now, you'll have to look this up for yourself if you're really interested in it. And believe me, I am, and I, I read a lot about it. And it makes sense to me. And, and that's really the scary part. But let's just take the information. What we got scientifically today as it stands, we are in a simulated reality. Not only that, what we do today affects what we did yesterday. It also affects what we'll do tomorrow. So time is interlinked and our observations seem to have the most power on what happens around us. This is something that we never really understood about ourselves. But it also begs a few questions. If by looking at something, particles, they behave a certain way because we look at them. We have to ask the question, what are we? Are we just trained observers? Are we here to bring this information to something else? What are we at this point in time? And then we also have to ask the question, when are we? Where do we exist? Do we truly exist today? Or do we partially exist today, yesterday, and tomorrow? Another question that begs is if this is a simulation, who controls it? And then the last question I would ask is why are we here? Are we here to do something in the simulation, or is the simulation simply going to happen and carry on regardless of our presence or not? And the reason I say this, and if you tuned into my last videos, I, uh, one of the things that always got to me was the nose missing on Mount Rushmore, Thomas Jefferson, 
where his nose fell off in the in the 90s and now it's back and that really tells us that hey it doesn't matter what we do what we construct what our efforts are on this planet they can be changed so easily not by our physical labor but simply by our decisions and how whether or not we observe something that seems to have at least scientists are saying today that that has more power on reality than us actually inventing or creating something <clears throat> what has the most power on our physical surroundings is whether or not we're paying attention to it amazing really amazing so I want you guys to contemplate those questions because I think the only one I can truly answer is the one where it says who controls reality that one I do, I can't answer the who but I can answer whether or not they're present if someone was present and they were controlling our simulation I don't think they would want us to be aware of it so I can honestly say that whoever is controlling or whoever created our reality I do not believe they exist today because this information I don't think would be available to us in such an absolute form. One in a billion. That is what physicists, physicists, physicists are now saying. One in a billion. That we are not simulated. That is an, an astronomical lie. And I've read enough about the experiment that I understand it and I believe it. It makes sense to me. I challenge you to uh, read up on it and, and and grasp it yourself because it's a pretty remarkable breakthrough in today's in today's day and age but contemplate those questions I'm really uh, curious to see what your answers would be and what comments you'd have because that you know I, I in my last videos I kind of hinted at it and I assumed that something like this was happening but I didn't realize the scope of it and how much research had already been done on it and it looks like there's been quite a bit. And all this information is out there. This isn't just coming from me. Um, this comes from a lot of physics, physics that have done these experiments since 1978. Um, I guess one other question that really uh, kind of is, it, it's been bothering me is, how long have we been simulated? Has this been going on since before, since around the time life began? Or was it even before that? Or are we simulated and actually on a planet to colonize it for some some other race? I don't know, but the only one that I can truly say that I believe is 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 present is the fact that whoever's hosting the simulation is no longer present. Because too many people are becoming aware of this. And I think that if he had the power to shut that down, he would have. Because obviously if you simulate people, you want them, especially like, you know, if you've ever played a uh role-playing game you realize there's non-playing characters and then there there's you you who's aware of everything and then the people around you who have no concept of who or what they are they just have a purpose now if one of those characters actually knew what it was and had the ability to be aware of you the game would be very different so so i don't think whoever created this simulation is still around we're we're discovering more about ourselves then I think would be healthy to him. So anyway, leave your comments and um, I'll try to get out another video in the next uh, week or so. Thanks.